What's going on everybody? The Real Sharif M here, aka Manganus Steel, and I am going to do something in this video that I don't normally do, and that is a bit of an unboxing. Um, I figured this would be a good time to do it because I received a number of knives for an amazing member in the community, and I'm currently rendering a video, so I can't really use my computer. It uses up all my resources. And I, I don't know, I just figured this would be an excellent time to kind of take a first look at all of these knives before I do my review and kind of tell you a little bit about them. If you guys don't know, there's an amazing member of the community by the name of Steve Clare, and he is, a serious, serious collector, like genuinely serious collector. But he's also unique in the space in that while he collects really fine and really high quality knives, he doesn't baby a single one, which is just mind blowing to me, really mind blowing to me. And this gentleman entrusted me, which, I'm a bit flabbergasted with uh, some of his like really really amazing knives you may have noticed that my tastes are going a little bit upscale I mean I've been in the knife game for a while I think that's kind of the inevitable pathway if you look at a number of uh, reviewers and people in the space uh, after a while of just getting budget knife after budget knife after budget knife, you, you want to go a little bit up market. Now granted, I have a fundamental limitation. My pockets don't go that deep. However, seeing what I have in front of me definitely gives me a lot more understanding of what I do like, what I don't like, and what I could see myself investing in in the future. I don't know if that makes that more attractive to you guys or not, <laughs> uh, but truth be told, I, I'm genuinely overwhelmed with what I have in front of me. Um, so kind of, let's, let's go through it. Let's, let's talk about each one. The first one is a new, to me, brand. Now, this guy may have been around for a little while. I'm gonna do my due diligence and research uh, him a bit. But this is the R and H knives Tasca Gen Two T A S C A. Okay, and truth be told, every time I put my hands on this, this is only the second time I've handled this knife. Uh, I get shivers down my spine, and it, it comes down to like, you see how it gets that like crazy white highlight in the blade this thing is not a small knife i mean there it is in my double extra large hands you can see it peeks out all the way at the end the ergos are comfortable but this thing feels so incredibly premium yeah it's somehow incredibly lightweight but robust feeling all at the same time and okay maybe it's going to be a little tight oh no i can reverse flick it uh but really i think the main way i would use this is this little subtle flipper here take a look at that look how tiny that is and it just it works consistently I, man, this is this is something special, and this is actually the knife that Steve Clare initially uh, reached out to me to review, uh, and then he said, "Is there anything else you'd like to check out?" This is is something genuinely special. Now, Steve has invited me. He said, "Carry it, disassemble it." I don't know if I can do that. <laughs> I, genu I genuinely don't know that I can do that. Uh, th this thing is something so unique. And again, there's something crazy that happens here with the blade. Y you see this like white highlight that it catches? I, I don't understand how it's doing that. 
that that's that is something it's it's not in the finish like it, it actually shifts and moves depending on the light that it catches and I, i've never seen that in like a dlc coat or anything before uh but it's truly amazing and it's it's really stunning in person so i'm not going to go too much deeper than that but this is the rnh knives tasca gen 2 and apparently uh i guess there is going to be like a warncliffe version if i'm not mistaken uh that is unique to steve claire like he may have actually pioneered uh that version of this knife so man uh dude th this is a crazy a crazy knife to to start off looking at okay the next two knives are from herman knives and if you guys know these guys these guys are polish and they make some really really beautiful designs uh in my opinion they're on the level of like a shirogorov or something like that and the first one here is the uh the sting and this thing is an m398 has such a beautiful subtle milling pattern that's done on it has a unique pivot system you can see it's got this like almost flower like pattern around it which locks it in and just dude even look at the pocket clip has the milling pattern has milling beneath it it's a liner lock which is why you see these two screw heads here or not the heads but the the bottoms kind of like poking through right here so it, it's actually like a, a liner lock within the titanium which has awesome access the flipper is just so strong and the ergos are like perfection like absolute perfection like I, I, I kind of want one of these after just handling it for a little bit. Uh, again, this is like the second time I've ever handled this knife. And to be honest, even from the first time I handled it, uh, I can honestly admit, like, I haven't really stopped thinking about it. This thing is, is beyond stunning. Beyond stunning. Now, Herman's aren't cheap. Don't get me wrong, but you'd have to hold it in hand to really appreciate the the craftsmanship and the subtle attention to detail. And, you know, the 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 uh, scales are also contoured and all of this stuff. It's just uh, and I love I love seeing this. Come on. There we go. When you see the the, the bottoms of the screws just kind of round it off so you get these like subtle dots. I even like them more than the, the Chicago style screws. It's just uh, speaks of quality. So that that's this is the Herman Sting absolute stunner. Next we have the Herman Dragonfly, which is a model I didn't know. Again, features this similar sort of milling work done to it which i think is just exquisite there's a, a contrasting anodization here of the pocket clip still has the same sort of detailing nice backspacer here look at that color man just really it's so nice in person and this guy is a little bit bigger but it maintains a lot of the same sort of uh, qualities as the smaller knife one of the things that immediately caught my attention the second I got this in hand is you see this little transition here how there's like the spine and then there's an extra sort of transition before you get to the butt this actually cradles the meat right here in my palm so well so well this thing's also done in M398 and 
there's just so many subtle details. I don't know if this was going to come up on camera, but if you look at the backspacer here, it has this signature Herman sort of triangular tip. But then if you look here at the, the jimping kind of detail, it's triangular. But then if you look at the grind here, it also creates this, a, a third triangular element before it goes and tapers into this beautiful tip. And, ah, man, this thing just, it's so comfortable. It's, it's perfect, you know? And it, these two really showed me that the budget knives almost have no excuse, right? Like, this is just the silhouette. It's the materials, it's the machining, and everything that makes this high quality, right? But there's no reason that a budget knife shouldn't be this comfortable. And especially at like this size or the size of the this thing. I mean, these things are perfect. And yet somehow budget knives are still floundering with good ergos. Uh, where these are just perfection. Like genuinely, th this is, <sighs> this is, this is awesome. And really, I may like the Sting a little bit more, but these details, man, these details right here, here, and here, kind of bringing it all together, really makes the Dragonfly like a serious contender. Um, what's really interesting is Mr. Claire uses these regularly, and he's used this to, as he put here, I use these to cut bumper covers when I needed to access and see hidden damage. These. <laughs> so if that's not a testament to the quality of these knives and the usability of these knives, I, I don't know what is. All right, now we're getting to, this is the penultimate uh, knife in the group and one that I have always, always wanted to get my hands on. And this is a uh, Spartan Harsey, like full size folder. And this one's a particularly dope one. This is the Plague Doctor. <laughs> Look at that milling and that detailing. So dope. So, so very dope. I mean, this is one of the quintessential American tactical knives designed by one of the, the great American knife designers. And here's something, again, for those of you who know me and my designs, look, tactical knives, little part of them always sticks out. It's part of the nature of the placement of the stop pin, <laughs> right? Like it's, it's not just me, it's not just Emerson. It's, it's part of the tactical knife design kind of ethos, right? Unless you intentionally design to cover that up, right? You'll always have a little part sticking out there. Part of why I really wanted to check this out is because it's one of the few big serious knives that are out there. It's a thick boy, you know, nice big chunk of steel, runs on bushings, not bearings. And really, like, if you look at my double extra large hands, again, like, this is a full-handed knife for me, you know? This, this is what I look for when I look for a knife that fits my hands in particular. Uh, and I will say, it doesn't disappoint. It's a lot more comfortable than I expected, particularly with this jimping here on the spine. Uh, actually, the jimping on the spine, I would say, is more aggressive than even the jimping on the blade. Um, but overall, a very, very nice knife. The only part that gives me concern, and I, and I may need to kind of use this guy just a little bit, is this little transition here from the spine to the butt of the knife uh, this gets me right here in the meat, you know, and I wouldn't have minded a little surface transition like we saw with the Herman. 
this little extra consideration right here in this section, just even a little bit, you know, you may have lost the lanyard hole, but in the grand scheme of things, I think it would have made the knife actually a lot more comfortable. Um, but we'll see, we'll see. Uh, we'll see if that generates any sort of discomfort if I'm kind of cutting through stuff. But overall, still very nice. Worth the money? Yeah, I, I'd say so. This thing is, is pretty dope. Last but not least, I, I had to, I had to, just because how many times are you going to be able to actually handle a full-size Strider? <laughs> I mean, dudes, this thing is, is nuts. You know, we have this crazy construction here where the G10 scale actually extends all the way over to the titanium scale. There's no backspace there. It's, it's part of that side of the G10. The texturing is actually really nice on the Strider. I'm not going to lie. It's not aggressive, as you would think, just by looking at it. Uh, but it really does feel good. The choke-up grip on this actually is amazing. I, I really, really dig it. The thickness of the steel is absolutely nuts. Look at that. I mean, compare that even to the Harsey. It makes the Harsey look thin. Look, <laughs> and this is not a small knife. <laughs> but this thing is a chunker. Thank God it's got this really nice hollow grind through it. Um, I don't know if this is for me, genuinely speaking. I mean, it has all of the signature sort of strider elements. I mean, look at the backside here. Look at that finishing work. It's got the over-travel disc, everything. You know, uses this. This is not a thumb, uh, thumb stud. That, that's literally the stop pin. I don't even know how it stops when it's closed which is kind of interesting uh that that's gonna take some investigation actually i'm, I'm quite curious how like it uses these as a stop in the open position but not in the closed position yeah striders are interesting stuff man like really interesting stuff but I think if there was like a smaller Strider, I, I could get into it. I really could. This, this is the uh, Strider SMF. And this thing is a beast. Just an absolute tank of a knife, really. Like, if I need to take a knife and throw it at somebody, <laughs> this would be it, man. Um but it's cool. It's very cool. And I am just grateful to Mr. Claire for sharing some of his collection with me. You know, these things are, are serious, serious tools. And I, I keep on thinking how is going to be the best way to show these off how is going to be the best way I, i've only had these for like a couple of days but i gotta tell you right off the rip my two favorite are this r and h tasca gen 2 i don't know man there's something about this it makes me just i get shivers in my spine when i handle it which is just really crazy. I haven't really had many knives feel that way. Uh, and definitely this Herman Knives Sting. This thing is just, oh, so good. So good. So well designed. So well executed. Especially for like 
what I would consider a mid-sized knife. I mean, this is a beaut. So, all right, enough of my rambling. I hope you guys enjoy this little look at what is coming in the future as far as reviews are concerned. And uh, catch you guys in the next one.